Well, hello, everyone. It's a pretty important week around here for the football team since we're getting ready to play in the conference championship game for the second year in the road, in a row. And uh, playing in Laramie in a two-week uh, span is kind of weird to me. I've never done that before. We have a couple coaches on the staff that have played the same team twice in the same year. And they said that's just the way it works. And then you think of the NFL where they play each other in their conference. They play each other twice a year, so it's not unusual. But it's really unusual for me. I think it's very difficult. I still think Wyoming uh, is the best football team we've played this year and is still the best football team we're going to play again. So I believe that both teams will respond after last week's games, and it'll be a very competitive, close football game that someone's going to win at the very end, and that team will be very excited about winning, and the other team will be depressed because they didn't win. But out of 12 teams in the league, there's only two of us that get to play in the championship game. There's 10 that would like to be there, so we're pretty happy about being there. Rocky, based on what happened to you last week, what happened to them last week, do you think there was just a fatigue factor that everybody left so much on the field when Laramie at the end of the game had spilled over last week? I have no idea what happened last week. Uh, you can speculate, and I lost some sleep thinking about why. You can speculate all you want. And both Coach Bowl and I have been around this game a long time, and we have been on both sides of the avalanche. I've been on the one side where the avalanche was in your favor and the other team could do nothing about it. And I wish this was my first time on the bad side, but it's not my first time on the bad side when things start going against you sometimes. Uh, the other team just has your number, and there's nothing you can do about it. And it seemed like that happened to both of us last week. So we're both coming from the same situation, and whichever team rebound, rebounds the best is going to win it. How concerned are you about your defense? I mean, they've given up a lot of yards, a lot of points the last two Saturdays. Well, I'm concerned uh, because we didn't play worth a darn last week. But it, uh, it's probably we played last week against the hottest offensive team in our league. They've been averaging the last five or six games of the season. They're averaging close to 500 yards and 40-some points. So they were the hottest team. Wyoming is the highest scoring team in our league already. So maybe we, would, we played two better offenses too. Everything concerns us that hasn't been good, okay? And we haven't played as good on defense the last two weeks, and we haven't uh, controlled the line of scrimmage on offense the last two weeks. So, yeah, that's a concern. I imagine they have a concern, too, because they didn't stop the run last week. I mean, it's a very interesting matchup because the, both teams deserve to be in the championship game, and both teams had a bad week. So I'm sure they have some questions, and we have some questions. That's what's going to make the game a great game. Rocky, what have you, you guys identified in the offensive line in particular about not getting more yardage early, not getting those first down yards? We're not maintaining our blocks as well as we did against some other teams earlier in the season. Now, let's be honest. That means that the guys we're blocking maybe are better, and they're getting off blocks better. As long as it's not an uh, X and O thing, as long as it's not we're blocking the wrong guys, we're making assignment mistakes, as long as it's not that, players win games and players lose games. Coaches lose and win games when it's an X and O deal, when your scheme is not good enough. Okay? And coaches can lose games for their teams by not having a proper scheme or a pro give them a proper chance to win. But if both coaches, staffs do a good job of giving you the, uh, the proper X and O part of the game, then it comes down to players. Players are always the most important. Players win games. Coaches do not win football games. Players win games. Coaches can lose a football game, but players win games. Is keeping Josh Allen in the pocket and not letting him move a critical piece of the equation defensively? 
uh, that's a double-edged sword. He is a great passer of the football. So if you're concerned about keeping him in the pocket without uh, getting a proper rush on him and make him throw it on time, he's going to kill you throwing the ball. So if you're going to rush him and try to make him throw it on time or make him throw it where he's uneasy and have him to throw it a little sooner than possible, you take the chance of him scrambling around and making a big play. So there's no right answer to that. You make sure you don't rush the passer and keep him in the pocket so he can't scramble, and then he kills you throwing it. I mean, that's why he's a good player. Rocky, what do you think about USD getting their first ever playoff win against a team like Cal Poly that you guys know somewhat? Oh, I, I think anything USD does in that division is really good. I, I think their coaching staff's a great coaching staff, and they do a good job. We played them last year. They were well prepared to play us, too. Rocky, how do you think your players took the loss this last weekend? And even maybe, you know, two, losing two in a row, obviously uh, you guys have lost a number of key players. Uh, what's their mindset right now? I think their mindset is they're worried about the championship game in Laramie. I think that's their mindset. I mean, uh, old folks like me, we take a while to get over things. Young folks don't take near as long to get over things, especially when there's something exciting in the future. And even though last Saturday was bad, guess what? It's exciting in the future. They get to play in the championship game. I think young people get over that very, very quickly. Rocky, you mentioned uh, <clears throat> the game's going to be close, maybe down to the last couple of plays or whatever. Would you anticipate having a few more extra plays set aside for your uh, fourth down efforts? No, we'll, we'll have our normal two or three plays that we might uh, use in a two-point situation. I've already been asked that question about 15 times this week in two days. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. If, if, it, if it comes down to it, are you going to go for two or are you going to go to overtime? It depends on the way the game is going. That decision has not been made yet. But... We'll, we'll have two or three plays in case we want to go for two. Rocky, uh, in the NFL, towards the end of the season, coaches take their teams out of pads, the wear and tear factor, fatigue, et cetera. We do anything different this week, maybe to get your kids a little bit more rest off their legs and just do walkthroughs rather than any type of heavy-duty installation? Do you have to think about that, or have you thought about it? Well, you think about it all year long. I mean, early in the season, we practiced uh, an hour and 45 minutes to two hours. We're down now that we don't practice any longer than an hour and 15 minutes. A total of 20 minutes is any kind of contact whatsoever. And it's nothing ones on ones. It's all against scout teams. So you, you reduce the amount of contact throughout the year. So we're not doing much contact anyway right now. You mentioned this situation is kind of niche you in terms of you know playing the same. I've never I've never done it before. I've right. never played the same team in the same year. Right. So in terms of like game planning and pre um, pre preparing, do you, do you talk to other coaches about should we like do you kind of second guess what you did in the in, in the previous game and try to switch it up and come up with a completely different game plan? I'm sure there's a lot of like tactics going on. Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think you you watched the film when you played them before. We've already watched it maybe ten times since Sunday. And you try to get a feel for what you did well and what you didn't do well. And obviously, you're going to try to fix the things you didn't do well. But my experience tells me, because uh, when you play yearly against certain teams, if you're playing really good offenses, which we are, they're very good on offense. I think, I don't know, they average 39 points a game. They lead our league. If you do exactly the same thing, they're going to tear you apart because guess what? They've watched the film 10 times too, and they have a way to attack what you've done well. So somehow you've got to change your game plan just enough so they don't have uh, you zeroed in, and you still can be effective at what you want to do. I mean, it's, it's kind of a weird deal. I've never... You know, from year to year, you try to change some things up so they don't zero in. But in two weeks, I don't know how much you can change up. So like the only because you confuse your own guys if you change up too much. So like the only similarities are in past seasons where you played multiple triple option offenses because you use that same phrase. You got to 
change it up. Yeah, you never play a triple option team the same way two years in a row. Yeah. <laughs> or you, they're going to set records. <laughs> Do you notice a, a jump in emotion with your players since Sunday because of what this week is and what it means in terms of unique bowl implications? I, I think that our football team showed a lot of excitement yesterday in practice. Now, they're in, they were energetic. They were, they were concentrating. They were into it. And I'm sure Wyoming is too. I, I don't know how many championship games there are in Division I football. How many, Mike? Seven. Seven? So we're one of 14 teams playing in a championship game. 14 out of 128. That's pretty unique uh, company, if you ask me. And I think our players understand that. I think our players are excited about playing. I think, and I want everybody to know, and I know Coach Bowles listening to this press conference, that we practiced in worse weather yesterday than they did. Because <laughs> we were out there and it was 50 degrees and it was raining and they were practicing indoors. I don't think they do either. <laughs> I don't think they feel sorry for us at all. <laughs> and I don't think it makes a darn bit of difference in the game because a little bit of rain in 50 degrees is not what we're going to play in. <laughs> Did you see Coach Bowles' press conference yesterday? No, I haven't seen it yet, but I'll watch it before the week's out. <laughs> he did a really good impression of Lou Holtz. So he did? Can you, yeah. Can you do an impression of Lou Holtz? Well, I've been accused of that already because the other teams, we're terrible and the other team's really good, right? That's what Lou Holtz. That's always the best team you've ever played, and our team is just horrible. Isn't that Lou Holtz? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was screaming but you got to do the Navy, which was 0 11, and he was screaming at his team that were going to get upset. you know, really excited and energetic was DeMonte Casey. Will you talk a little bit about how his personality helped this team? Well, him being excited yesterday at practice is not unusual <laughs> because he's pretty excited at every practice. And I think that his energy carries over to a lot of the other guys on the team. And it probably means more because he's a really, really good player. When you have good players that show energy and excitement about practice, it kind of is contagious and it gets other people involved. But what you saw yesterday has been for the last three years, that's just him. How much does like every 10 degrees of weather matter? When it's, <laughs> I mean, it's like 30 to 20 to 10. <laughs> I, I, I can only speak from my own experience. I've coached in some really cold weather and I've actually in the coldest place I've ever been, I actually played. The very last game I ever played as a player, I played in Edmonton, Alberta, in the Western Final of the Canadian Football League. Now, we did play at like 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and the sun was out, but it was three below zero. And I think there was a little breeze. It wasn't windy, but there was a little breeze about 10 to 12. Uh, it's hard to feel anything. It's very difficult. And it doesn't matter if you live in it or not. It's very difficult to function in very cold weather. But both teams would be battling the same deal. And I don't think weather or snow or even rain is the biggest deterrent to football players performing. The biggest deterrent that makes the biggest difference in football is wind. If the wind gets to 20 to 25 miles an hour, it, it dramatically affects the game, dramatically increases the chances of mistakes that you would not normally make. And it, it's hard on the quarterbacks to throw it because they're throwing with it, they're throwing against it. It's hard on punters, it's hard on kickers. And everybody that's supposed to catch a pass and catch a punter or a kick, it's very hard on them too. So wind, if you have a lot of wind, it really increases the difficulty of the game and makes it much more likely of mistakes. Now, cold weather doesn't really do that. You just have to live with it and suffer through it. But guess what? The guys on the other sideline are doing the same thing. You wear jackets in the <laughs> Do we wear jackets? Like who? No, I'm, I'm kidding about that. But do you guys have anything different, though, on underneath or anything? Oh, sure. 
Yeah, they, they wear long underwear underneath and all that. Now I'm speaking from experience again. I had all that stuff on too and I was still really cold. <laughs> You guys play. I mean, you guys played nine degrees at Boise. Yeah, a couple of years ago. they still. Played. Our players are still talking about it. How cold it was. <laughs> yeah. But they. It didn't. I mean, you know. No, that was they, a pretty well played game. It's a well played game. Yeah, it was a well played game. Through three quarters mm -hmm. or whatever. I mean, people always, I think, think equate San Diego players as kind of softness. You know, because we come from. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that matters because the majority of the very successful football teams in the country that live in places where the weather goes bad, they all have indoor practice fields. So they don't practice outside. They practice inside. So they can make it as hot or as cool as they wanted inside there. I mean, so I, I don't think – I think way back, maybe when I played, the teams that practiced and played in that weather had huge advantages – against the teams that did not. Those advantages have disappeared. I do remember the Boise guys coming out without any shirts on in warm-ups. Yeah, and then you saw them go back in and put them on when they came back out for the game. They didn't have long sleeves, they didn't have long sleeves on for warm-ups, but they did when the game started. They might not have realized how cold it was out there. <laughs> a couple of years ago, there was a Green Bay game that I think they got kind of concerned about how low the temperature got. How low does it have to get before there's a concern for player safety? Oh, I don't know. We'd have to ask the doctors and trainers. I have no idea. It's not going to get that cold. I looked it up right before I came in here. High is going to be 30, low is going to be 18. That's not bad at all. You guys are playing for your conference championship. It means everything, obviously, to you, to this team, the university. You're playing in a sport where winning your conference championship doesn't necessarily mean all that much if you look around the country. Do you have any thoughts on that, or are you too focused on what you have to do this week? Well, I, I think I disagree with that. It depends on who you're asking how important a conference championship is. If you ask our players, if you ask our fans, I think it's very important that we win a conference championship. I think it's very important that we're in a conference championship. I've just told you that there's 12 teams in this league. They all have players. They all have the same number of scholarships. They all have coaches. Uh, in our league, the budgets are fairly closely I mean, they're fairly close in our league. So every team in our league puts as much effort into being good. Every player on every team wants to be really, really good. And to get in the championship game, that's very, very important to a lot, a lot of people. Maybe not to the national media, but our kids could care less. And I'll bet you the Wyoming kids could care less too. I, so I disagree how important a championship game is. But like for the, say, Las Vegas Bowl, do you think they should automatically have to take the Mountain West champion? No, I'm a, I, I guess, I, no, I do not think they should have to. I think everybody should try to get the best matchup in their bowl game that fits their needs. And if that's financial, it's financial. If it's national recognition, it's national recognition. Whatever their needs are, they ought to be able to pick who they want to, but they have, they have contracts and everything that kind of keep some people from picking who they want. Rocky, coming out of a game like last week, as a coach, it, does it at this point in the season do any good to yell and scream? <laughs> or, do you just, or are the seniors and your kids far enough along now to kind of address that themselves? I, I, uh, now I hope this means I've progressed in my coaching career. Uh, for about the last five to ten years, yelling and screaming does not work. Okay, it took me a while to learn that. Uh, the age group that I work with does not respond to yelling and screaming. They, they actually think it's funny. They wonder what's wrong with you. <laughs> so we don't, we don't yell and scream anymore. Now, we, we get boisterous sometimes about effort, about trying hard, go, 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 let's go, let's go, you know, but yelling and screaming and uh, threatening their manhood and all that stuff, that, that's 20 years ago. Now that, I started a long time before 20, I mean, I started 40 years ago, so there was some of that in my early coaching career, uh, but that stuff does not work anymore, so you don't even think about it anymore. 
The only person that makes feel better is you. <laughs> and it makes your team feel worse. <laughs> is Rockyism a league championship, conference championship win uh, bigger than a bowl win? Yes, for you guys? by far. For almost everybody. A conference championship win is, is bigger than winning in a bowl game. The only, the only ones that have more than that are the playoff teams, the four teams that are going to be in the playoffs. That's bigger. The semifinal games are bigger than the conference championship because it looks to me like there might be a couple teams in that that are not their league champs. And I think they ought to change that rule. If you can't win your own league, you shouldn't be in the playoffs. That makes sense to me. Does it make sense to everybody else? If you can't win your own league, you should not be in the playoffs. But there's a good chance that at least one team's going to be in the playoffs that's not going to win their league. There might even be two that might not win their league and still be in the playoffs. I don't think that's right. You can't even be, beat the guys that you're associated with and you get in the playoffs. Doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not the one that makes those rules. And I'm not the one that pays all that money to get the right name teams into the playoffs. <laughs> hey, last question for Coach. Coach, did Ryan Dunn and Austin White there practice yesterday, and do you expect them to keep going all week? They did both practice yesterday, and we hope they are able to play. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. I enjoyed it. We are in the championship game. <laughs>